Good afternoon. My name is Barbara Fuller, and as chair of the board, I welcome you to this February 15, 2022, regular meeting of the Washtenaw County Board of Road Commissioners. Our communications manager, Emily Kaiser, will now describe how our meetings operate, how to access the agenda packet, and how people may participate remotely. Emily. Thank you, Commissioner. So there are multiple ways to make public comment during today's meeting, whether you're joining us in person or virtually. If you're here in person and would like to make public comment, please fill out the sign-in sheet here. If you're joining us virtually, we ask we will ask you to virtually raise your hand at the appropriate time in the agenda. If you're joining us virtually, the chat feature on this Zoom meeting is available only as technical support for users on their computer or smartphone. If you're experiencing technical issues with audio or video, video during the meeting, please submit a comment in the chat feature and I will help you troubleshoot. If you're a staff member experiencing issues, please contact the IT help desk for assistance. The audio and video of this meeting is being recorded. A link to the video recording will be posted to wcroads.org in the coming days. There are also printed copies of today's meeting agenda on the table here, and it's also posted to wcroads.org. There's also a link available in the chat if you're joining us from your computer or smartphone. Thanks, Commissioner. Thank you, Emily. At this time, I ask folks to join us in the Pledge of Allegiance, and then I'd like to follow that with a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Commissioner. And if you remain standing, a moment of silence to recognize the uh, recent death of John Postgay, a 27 year employee of this road commission. Thank you. May I have a motion to approve the agenda as presented, please? Madam Chair, I motion that we approve the February 15, 2022, 1 p.m. agenda. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion? Any additions, deletions, changes? Hearing none, all those in favor, Aaron, if you would call the roll. I can call the roll. Oh, uh, I can call the roll. Sorry. Uh, Commissioner Radry. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Doug Fuller. Aye. Commissioner Gloria Yamas. Yes. Commissioner Joanna McCollum. Yes. And Chair Barb Fuller. Yes. Managing Director Cheryl Siddle. Present. Okay. Oh, right. I do that. Oh. Uh, Director of Engineering, County Highway Engineer Matt Axnell. Present. Director of Operations, Jim Harmon. Present. And Director of Finance and IT, Dan Ackerman. Here. Okay. Uh, at this time, may I have a motion to accept the board meeting minutes of February 1st, 2022, as presented, pages 3 through 13 of the packet. Madam Chair, I move to accept the Board meeting minutes. Before. Any additions, deletions? Hearing none. Emily, Aaron. Yes. Uh, did we? Sorry. Oh, sorry. oh Aaron. Uh, I'm here. <laughs> sorry uh, about that. Uh, called, hold on, Aaron. I think I called roll for roll call for attendance, and I think we need to do a roll call for the agenda. I'm sorry. I think I messed those up. Okay, I will do the roll call for the um, agenda, okay? I, I think we need to do that so far. Sorry, I was doing, we didn't do roll call for attendance, right? We missed roll call for attendance, and now we need to do roll call for the agenda. All right, um, so Commissioner Rod Green? Yes. Commissioner Doug Fuller? Aye. Commissioner Gloria Yamas? Yes. Commissioner Joanne McCollum? Yes. And Commissioner Barb Fuller? Yes. And um, I will do roll call now for the February 1st board meeting minutes. Commissioner Doug Fuller? Aye. Commissioner Gloria Yamas? Here. 
Commissioner Joanne McCollum? Yes. Commissioner Rod Green? Yes. And Commissioner Barb Fuller? Yes. All right, next item on our agenda, may I have a motion to accept the closed session minutes of February 1st, 2022. These were sent to the road commissioners separately. Madam Chair, of acceptance of the closed session minutes of February 1st, 2022 as presented. Support, thank you. Any discussion, amendments, additions, deletions? Seeing none, Aaron, if you'd please call the roll. Commissioner Joanne McCollum? Yes. Commissioner Doug Fuller? Aye. Commissioner Gloria Yamas? Yes. Commissioner Rod Green? Yes. Commissioner Barb Fuller? Yes. Next item on our agenda is public comment. This is the time set aside on the agenda to receive comments from the public. <coughs> this is not intended to be a period for dialogue. Each person will be allotted three minutes to address the board. And Emily, if you have instructions on how the public can do this. Thank you, Commissioner. So since this is a hybrid meeting with both in-person and virtual attendees, we will take turns between those attending in-person and those attending virtually. For virtual attendees, we ask that you virtually raise your hand now. If you're viewing the meeting on your computer, first make sure to click Join Audio. You can then raise your hand by clicking the Participant or Reactions button at the bottom of your screen, and then the Raise Hand button. If you're joining us here in person, um, or if you're joining us, I'm sorry, if you're joining us from your touchtone phone, you can uh, raise your hand by dialing star nine. I will unmute virtual participants with raised hands one at a time. I will announce your username or the last four digits of your phone number when it is your turn to speak. Please state your name and address before beginning your comments. For in-person attendees, we ask, we'll start with those who have signed up on a sign-in sheet first. And if you didn't sign in, you're still welcome to make comment. I'll notify you when it's your turn. At this time, Commissioner, we don't have anybody with a raised hand. Thank you, Emily. We will move on to written communications. They appear on pages 14 through 18 of our packet. Anything people want to draw our attention to or comment on? Madam Chair. Yes, sir. I would just like to comment that I appreciate uh, the positive comments that we received from the department about the recent storm and the good job that the Lord my kind of local did in attacking it. Appreciate your thoughts. Thank you. Sure. Commissioner Yamas, I want to echo those sentiments and I also want to thank the, uh, Cheryl Sadal, the managing director, for her communicating with uh, Representative Dinkle. And it was so appreciated to hear from the public how much they uh, appreciated our efforts in this form. Great job to our staff and uh, to all the hard workers outside. Uh, Commissioner, I'm getting some feedback that they, uh, the public can't hear you. If you guys could just make sure to speak up. Yep, thank you. Speak up. Okay. Any other comments wanting to draw attention to the written communications at all? All right, we had no public comment, so we will move past that item. Next on our agenda is new business, the consent agenda. May I have a motion, please, to approve the consent agenda as presented, items 1 through 11, pages 19 through 24, provide background information on those items. May I have a motion? Madam Chairman, the adoption of the consent agenda for items 1 through 11 is presented. Thank you. Support. Thank you. Is there discussion? I'd like a point of clarification. Commissioner Thomas, can I please have uh, speak up, please? Can I please have a point of clarification on number six? Item number six, the Perfect. state trunk line maintenance going bid. Yes. What's the clarification that you desire? I would like to know how it was that B and B landscaping uh, was not in compliance. I could not find that information. All right. How they broke the compliance that they lost that bid since it was substantially lower. Not that it's better. I just need clarification. Okay. Cheryl, can you help us with that, please, or one of your staff? 
Um, I would be happy to turn that over to Jim Harmon. I know that we have very specific requirements with respect to the bids, including bid bonds and online bidding. So um, I'd be happy to have Jim answer that question. Mr. Harmon. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Commissioner Yamas, the uh, bidder failed to provide the required bid bond. So they did not follow our specifications, instructions for bidding. Thank you. Thank you. And what was the other item? I'm sorry. But that was the only oh. other. Thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, Commissioner uh, Doug Fuller. Doug Fuller. There goes the answer. Thank you. All right. Any other points of clarification? Seeing none, Erin, if you would please call the roll. Commissioner Joanne McCullum? Yes. Commissioner Rod Green? Yes. Commissioner Doug Fuller? Aye. Commissioner Gloria Yamas? Yes. And Commissioner Barb Fuller? Yes. Next is our single action item. May I have a motion uh, to relinquish the public road easement of Peelmeyer Drive in Stilling Township? Be happy to make that motion. Thank you. you. Want me to read it or? I'd like a second and then we'll okay. go to discussion in a second. Thank you. Discussion at all on this? Any questions about this item? Personally, I'd like to have somebody from staff explain what it is that's really going on here. I mean, I can read what's there in front of me, but how about flushing this out a little bit? Manager Director, could you help us with that, please? Sure, I'd be happy to. And also, I know that Clip Roche's here if there's any further questions. Um, essentially, uh, this is part of what was previously a bypass around um, the city of Chelsea. And um, the concept of that has, um, has uh, stopped for a variety of reasons, not the least of which is um, both the city and the Sylvan Township have approved developments that preclude that bypass from ever truly taking place. In this particular case, I believe it was post, Peelmeyer Drive was supposed to go from Brown Drive up to Coliseum Drive. Um, there's already development that is has been built that is um, stopping that connection from taking place. So this is consistent with what the township is now envisioning for that area. We currently have a right of way that, run, that bisects the property um, that can't connect to anything if even if they had wanted to. So we are relinquishing our rights in that right of way. Um, they will then um, modify it so that the appropriate connection, call the stack, those types of things are put in as part of their development moving forward. But Peelmeyer will not continue in the, in the way that it was originally intended. Um, and that was a while ago that, that, was, that we originally had the rights of way um, dedicated to us for that. And this is being done at their request. At their request, correct. But consistent with what the township is also envisioning for that area. Understood. Thank you. Any further questions? Yes, I do. Cheryl, there's a reference to a call sack correct. here. Um, where is that supposed to be? Or is it at this point undefined? Um, it, it is on the site plan that should be. There was some information that was put in the packet. It gives a, very, it gives a, a rough description of it, but essentially it's on the south side of their property. If I may jump in, this is Kurt. Please. So what we're looking at doing is currently we have an existing cul-de-sac further north on the site, and we're essentially shifting that cul-de-sac further to the south uh, to better accommodate the not only the public and the site plan, uh, but the development as well. Is there the possibility, Mr. Roche, of doing a screen share with your little cursor to point these things out to us? It's page 45. Let me see if I can get to the correct page and forgive me if I share, uh, I believe that was page 46. 45 and 46. Kurt, do you want me to share it and you can tell me where to point? Am I sharing a screen? Yes. No, you are. Yep. Okay, good. So this is uh, 
I guess the north property line through here, the existing right of way would have continued from the south property line across this area to the north with the cul-de-sac being approximately in this location. Oh, what we're looking at doing is shifting that further to the south. Uh, so essentially there can be a, a private road that comes through this area. So on, on what we were provided, on, which is sheet number four, shows a, what to call it, that shows a bulb um, where you're, you're indicating that's going to be the cul-de-sac where your hand is right now? Yes. Okay, so it's all gonna be on the west side of the road. Correct, it, it currently is on the west side uh, because we didn't have any rights at the time to acquire the bulb on the east side in this parcel, but subsequently the developer uh, property owner acquired both properties on either side of the right of way. Okay. So in turn, we would be not only shifting that cul-de-sac further to the south, but rewriting the description to include the additional right-of-way width on the west side of uh, Peeler Meyer Drive. Does that answer your questions, Commissioner? Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Mr. Fuller, if you would read the resolution, or I can if you would prefer. Um, I'll be happy to. All right. Um, proposed motion, whereas the Board of County Road Commissioners of the County of Washington being a public body corporate whose address is 555 North Z Road, Ann Arbor, Michigan, 48103, was granted various public road easements recorded in Library 3216, page 32, Library 3216, page 34, Library 3216, page 36, Library 3216, page 38, and Library 4349, page 62, referred to collectively as right of way easements, attached hereto and incorporated herein as attachment A. And whereas development of, I can't pronounce his road name, Peel Meyer. Peelmeyer Drive, a public road, was previously truncated by private development north of the right-of-way easements and whereas the development of lands encumbered by the right-of-way easements will, as a condition of permit approval, convey a revised public road, revised public road right-of-way easement as de depicted in Exhibit A to the Board of County Road Commissioners of the County of Warshaw, and where it, whereas it is the desire of the Board of County Road Commissioners of the County of Warshaw to relinquish any and all interest in the right-of-way easements, more particularly described in Library 3216, page 32, Library 3216, page 34, Library 3216, page 36, Library 3216, page 38, and Library 4349, page 62, reserving an easement for existing public utilities. Now, therefore, be it resolved that upon that upon the upon, no, that upon the recommendation of the Director of Engineering, County Highway Engineer, and the concurrence of the managing director. The board hereby relinquishes its, relinquishes its interest in the right of way easements, more particularly described in Library 3216, page 32, Library 3216, page 34, Library 3216, page 36, Library 3216, page 38 and Library 4349, page 62, reserving an easement for existing public utilities. Be it further resolved that a certified copy of this resolution be reported in the Washington County Register of Deeds Records. May I have a second? Thank you. Any discussion? Erin, if you would please call the roll. Commissioner Rod Green? Yes. 
Commissioner Doug Fuller? Aye. Commissioner Gloria Yamas? Yes. Commissioner Joanne McCollum? Yes. And Commissioner Barb Fuller? Yes. Next item on our agenda are reports. We have both of our county commissioners with us today, and I want to acknowledge that they participated in our working session this morning. I appreciate all the time they devoted to this particular uh, agency today. Commissioner Sim Shank, Chair of the County Board, would you like to come? Thank you, Chair. I appreciated the session this morning. I learned a lot, and I will be following up on on those items where it seems like it'd be good to know more. Transportation is a, is a very complex subject. And so I'm um, really diving in this year now that we have the pandemic, uh, I wouldn't say under, as, I don't know, as, as, we're, as we're learning how to do a lot extra besides the pandemic. And then also I wanted to say thank you so much for all the work for your staff and, and you did during the snowstorm, I know it wasn't easy, but um, it's so important and I just want you to know how much we appreciate your work. That's all. Thank you. Commissioner Sanders. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I, I guess I just wanna echo uh, what Chair Schink mentioned, I really wanted to applaud and say that I'm I'm happy and pleased with the work that was done during the, the snowstorm and just to let your employees, your staff know that they are appreciated uh, and their well-being is important to us. So uh, I think they did a good job under the circumstances and, you know, with your staffing levels, just want to say thank you for that. Um, and I would hope my, I'm literally on Michigan Avenue right now. So I would hold my comments about this road. We'll talk later, but it's good, <laughs> it's good to see everybody. <laughs> sure, I want to point out that that's a road under MDOT's jurisdiction, please. Sure. Okay, we, we need help, but oh, I, I understand that. So, but thank you for giving me an opportunity to address you all. I hope that you're doing well. Of course, thank you. It's good having both of you with us today. Uh, we'll move on to road commissioner reports. Commissioner Duck Fuller. Um, I've sent everybody a copy of my uh, normal report. I would also like the chair's uh, acquiescence. Uh, I got a phone call uh, at lunchtime between our two meetings today from a resident of Chelsea uh, who sent me an email that after, when I get the computer hooked back up to a printer, uh, I'll send it to everybody, including uh, staff. Dear Commissioner Fuller, I wanted to take a moment to let you know about the amazing service that has taken place in Western Warshaw County, specifically Sylvan Township, on Sibley and Bush Roads. Yesterday afternoon, February the 14th, I responded to an unrelated WCRC social media post asking if potholes that were starting on the paved township portion of Sibley Road and also at the intersection of Sibley and Bush Roads could be looked at when the guys had time. I received not only a lovely and immediate response from Emily Kaiser explaining how best to report potholes, which was very much appreciated, but also that she would give the guys in Chelsea Yard um, heads up. Um, wow, that's going above and beyond just doing a job. Today, less than 12 hours later, I drove those stretches of road and the potholes had been filled. Not only the ones that I had noted, but also additional ones the guys had found. And this prompt service took place after a huge storm, huge snowstorm last week and before a possible impending one this week. To everyone involved, a huge thank, thank you. You are the best. I also wanted to know that the board was aware of just how awesome and responsive your team of amazing employees are not only in the main office, but also in the Chelsea yard. Kudos to them all. 
Lisa Allmendinger, 818-829 Bush Road. Um, so uh, I thank Ms. Allmendinger for her comments um, when I was talking to her on the phone. So that was a pleasant interruption to my lunch. All right. Commissioner Yamas. Oh. I reviewed the Ed Naiola's CRA legislative update on 2 4 that reported the top CRA legislative priority um, federal buyout bills passed, which was great for us. And on 2 11, uh, there's a great article on top on a township focus article on how the ARPA funds can indeed. Uh, they can now use them on roads. So those townships that have been coming to us, it's a great opportunity and besides waterways. So I just wanted to point that out that those legislative updates are a wonderful and insightful. Thank you. That's it. Okay. Commissioner Green. I have no report. Thank you, sir. Commissioner McCollum. I did submit a report. Thank you. Appreciate having that in advance. Um, I want to um, echo all of the accolades that have been showered upon the Washington Road, County Road Commission team for the work in that uh, snow event that occurred, pointing out that many of our crew members work two eight-hour shifts back-to-back, -back, uh, which is a commitment that I think many of us overlook because we're asleep <laughs> when they're up there clearing the roads for us. I um, also want to commend Emily and her team for the social media messages that went out in advance, adjusting people's expectations for when the back roads and subdivision roads would be plowed. I think that advance notice goes a long way to having people understand that we're coming, we'll get there as soon as we can. You haven't been, been forgotten. Um, so I'm hopeful that that's helpful. Also want to recognize and thank Superior Township for declaring a snow emergency that required vehicles to be removed from the streets. Uh, the city of Saline did so as well, although that's not our responsibility, but it all together made it safer and more efficient for snow clouds to remove, to maneuver on those two days. Uh, also on February 9th, I attended the chat session and at that particular, on that particular occasion, we had no visitors. Uh, we will move on now to the managing director and her staff reports. Uh, the reports appear on pages 47 through 58 of the packet. Cheryl? Sure. Um, good afternoon. I'll start by asking if anyone has any questions about the staff report. We have to try to answer any questions. All right. Um, also, um, in response to Commissioner Caroline Sanders, I had a lovely conversation with her on Friday, so I owe her a couple of pieces of information, um, including uh, an answer on Michigan Avenue. So, Commissioner Fuller, a portion of what Commissioner Sanders is referring to is under our jurisdiction. Michigan Avenue and US 12, those names are used interchangeably. They are not always interchangeable. And there is a small piece of Michigan Avenue that is under the jurisdiction of the Washtenaw County Road Commission. So while it's nice to sometimes be able to say that's not our road, in this case, a portion of what she's asking about is our road. But we'll get an answer to her. And actually I have good news because we have a project for our portion next year. So Commissioner. What portion is under our jurisdiction? Um, in the city of Ypsilanti, if you're coming out westerly, yes. um, we start right at the city limits, which is, I think, roughly Wallace. And then we go to basically the interchange. We don't have the bridge. We don't have quite the entire interchange at Michigan Avenue and I-94, but um, up to the interchange and then the interchange itself and then westerly becomes MDOT. Okay, so that's a quarter mile or half mile? Um, that's it's. I think that's over a mile in length by the time you okay. you know because it's through Mansfield, it's through Ellsworth, it's through Hewitt. So okay. all of that where we did that three lane conversion that would be under our jurisdiction. Um, we had a safety project there years ago, so that little piece is ours. So I know a lot of times it's really nice to, or easy to be able to say not on a road, we'll pass that on. 
Uh, but in this case, a portion of what I believe Commissioner Sanders is referring to is under our jurisdiction. And we do have work, we do have work planned for next year, so that's the good news there. Okay. All right. Absolutely. Um, the only other thing that I will share um, with the board before I turn it over to staff is that we did have um, mediation last week um, as part of our contract negotiations. And in fact, we have a second session of mediation scheduled this afternoon. Um, so um, Jim and Nicole um, will be starting that at two o'clock. Um, so if we extend that late, uh, Mr. Harmon will sign off at that point in order to attend uh, round two of mediation. So, um, do you have any questions for me before I hand it over to the directors? Well, I guess I was wondering how mediation is going to make that going. So, we can get back to work with it. Sure, absolutely. Okay, with that, I'm happy to hand it over to Matt. Good afternoon, board members. Um, I just wanted to thank you this morning uh, for going through kind of federal aid. 101, that was a pretty high level uh, working session. And as you can see, it's it's a complicated subject, but happy to talk anytime. And uh, even today on your consent agenda, you had approved an MDOT contract for Grove Road and LaFord Road, which is using those federal funds for resurfacing. And uh, also as a reminder in your in our budget, Appendix I, uh, where we list all of our primary road project lists, you'll find uh, a column where it shows all the projects that have federal funds in them uh, for the current year. And I think that totals just over $10 million for this, this year. And in uh, the second quarter budget review, we typically do a look ahead for the next two years. So you'll have that to look forward to. Um, but if you have any questions on what's planned for the current TIP call for 2023 to 2026, I'd be happy to answer them anytime. So that's all I have for today. Uh, we continue to get ready for uh, this construction season by uh, getting bids and getting projects ready for construction. Any questions? Thank you, Matt. Uh, next up on the agenda, we have Jim, and obviously we didn't quite have the snowmageddon that had been predicted, but as you indicated, we had multiple days of back-to-back uh, -back shifts. Our folks were working. There were some very long hours involved in all of that. Um, we, I think many of us are internally grateful for the service that they provided and continue to provide because even this past weekend, we still continue to have weather-related incidents um, where they've all been out keeping the rest of us safe as we traverse the roadway. Um, and then Commissioner Fulton had also asked about another thing that kept some of our staff busy over the weekend, which was the bridge strike on U, uh, of the Warren Road overpass on US 23. So Jim, be happy to hand it over to you. Cheryl, thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, good afternoon. Happy to be here with you. Uh, Madam Chair, I have to correct you. It was three double shifts consecutive. Uh, that, so that was that was Wednesday the 2nd, uh, Thursday the 3rd, and Friday the 4th, the crews um, worked doubles and then had to come in Saturday, that fourth day, and worked about anywhere between seven and a half by eight and a half hours on Saturday. So it was indeed long. We're grateful that the forecast wasn't as significant as um, originally forecasted, but it did it, it, it demand response and time and uh, certainly expensive resources and energy. So we're very, um, very pleased with the crew's performance. I'm grateful for the compliments from the public and from the board, and I'll certainly share those with staff. They appreciate um, the recognition for their hard work and their diligence. Um, with that said, we are monitoring forecasts for another possible winter storm this Thursday. That'll it'll probably warm up here, uh, turn into rain Wednesday night, and then uh, sometime Thursday morning trans, uh, transfer over to a mixture, a winter mix, and to snow. Um, the forecast is still a little uncertain, so we're, we're watching that. Um, if it shifts north, shifts south, just half a county, it can make an, an enormous difference. So in any event, we'll be prepared uh, for that for that uh, storm should that land in Washtenaw County. Um, the operation staff report for the period of January 24th through February 6th can be found in your packet 
beginning on page 48 and concluding on page 50. I'll take a breath in the event the board has any questions about that. I just challenge anyone out there to do any intentional sustained work for 16 hours straight to see what it feels like. That's just an incredible stretch where you've got to be paying attention to all kinds of conditions and circumstances. Uh, it, it's just, it's difficult for me to comprehend spending 16 hours in a truck with snow flying all over and drivers trying to get past me. <laughs> um, so please, thanks, thank the drivers for what they're able to do and that it is appreciated. Will do, thank you, appreciate that. Um, moving on, we are making uh, a batch of cold patch today. Our vendor, our liquid asphalt vendor, um, arrived on scene with their pug mill. That's a towable device that mixes the liquid asphalt with our blast furnace slag that we have stockpiled here at the main yard. And we turn that into cold patch. And uh, they're making a batch. It'll be a little in excess of 400 tons, probably around 425 tons of mix. Uh, and then we'll load that out to the satellite yards as needed to replenish their stockpile. Uh, beginning to see potholes with freezing and, and thawing cycles, uh, that'll probably tend to increase. And so we're glad to have uh, a good quantity of patch on hand uh, for that purpose. And finally, the Warren Road bridge strike. Um, uh, Cheryl did ask if I could uh, brief the board on that incident. Approximately 434 Friday afternoon, February 11th, a truck uh, pulling a trailer with a medium size excavator uh, on the trailer was northbound US 23, north of the west triple decker. And um, reasons unknown to us, other than the load was insecure, the boom of the excavator um, was too high and struck the concrete beams of uh, the Warren Road Bridge. The truck was in the outside lane, the right lane headed northbound and did significant damage to the bridge. Um, emergency responders, um, quickly responded. I, I must say our crews were some of the first on scene. Uh, I do want to recognize the efforts at that point and over the weekend of Adam Lape, superintendent of maintenance, uh, Tim Hackbarth, our state trunk line crew foreman, Justin Ott, group leader, the state trunk line crew, our night patrol crew, and members of district six, and Mike Masty, our foreman for that yard. There was a collaborative effort for incident response, um, to provide traffic control devices, to provide mutual aid uh, for MDOT in the area emergency responders with that US highway closure and the, uh, the damage and investigation and ultimate demolition that needed to occur. Uh, it was a long weekend. And that was also under the threat of three or four inches of snow on Sunday that fortunately didn't materialize. Um, I'll share my screen and uh, show a couple of things, provide some visual context, and then answer any questions that the board may have. One second. And I'll wait, Madam Chair, for um, your confirmation that you can see this. We see a map. Okay. Uh, Google Map. Uh, of course, City of Ann Arbor, we're referring to northbound US 23, north of the West Triple, uh, specifically the Warren Road Bridge over US 23. Warren Road is a paid primary road under our jurisdiction, uh, between, located between Pontiac Trail. Some of you may recall the Ann Arbor Township Hall fire station is in this location on the right side of the screen. Warren Road over 23 and connecting with Whitmore Lake to the west. Um, I will turn on satellite. I will zoom down to the road, get oriented. So I'm pointing the right direction. 
We are on the northbound lanes of the US 23 flex route facing Warren Road. This imagery was from June of 2021, summertime. Um, and as we approach, you will notice um, the bridge has been struck previously. Uh, fortunately, MDOT confirmed during those prior incidents that it was minor, a um, little bit of damage, whoops, sorry. A little bit of damage you can see here to the edge of this leading beam on the south side of the bridge. Um, I'll back up and spin back around. You'll notice we have a center pier. So there's a span from uh, touchdown point here on the east side uh, on Warren Road to this uh, pier and then a span of bridge over to the center and then again to this pier and then again to the west toward Whitmore Lake on the west side of US 23. This car over here is southbound, we're in the northbound. The truck pulling the trailer with the excavator was northbound in the outside lane and the boom uh, was too high and ripped through the bottom of all these concrete beams and damaged the uh, cable tensioning, the steel tensioning that's embedded in the beams. I'll show a picture of that for the board's benefit. Uh, first of all, this is not the trailer and equipment, but according to Superintendent Adam Late, this is similar to what uh, was out there. And apparently this boom um, was too high and this leading edge right here is what struck the bottom of the bridge beams. Um, I have a picture of the damage. Um, so this was taken fr uh, Friday night by Adam. Um, uh, at the same time, MDOT bridge engineers were on site uh, doing an inspection of the bridge. So you can see the damage to all the beams, uh, damage to the concrete, and then the embedded steel, the tension steel cabling that's in the beams was snapped. Um, again, um, kudos to Adam. He immediately, he was one of the first ones on scene and immediately closed Warren Road to prevent any live load, any traffic from going over this bridge. And that was important. MDOT uh, bridge engineers concluded that without traffic, just the dead load of this bridge, that it was so compromised that it needed to be removed. And that was the reason they shut the highway down and the highway remained closed until the demolition was complete. Um, MDOT's had a few of these bridge strikes and does have a procedure to let an emergency contract um, and there are certain MDOT personnel authorized to administer that. That did occur. Um, and um, contractor did commence with demolition uh, Friday, Saturday, uh, was cleaned up Sunday morning and um, they were able to reopen northbound um, with under this condition after demol demolishing that span of the bridge. So that hazard was removed that allowed MDOT to reopen northbound US 23. That is the condition as it exists today. Our staff working with MDOT staff and traffic and safety, Brent Schleck and his group to establish a bona fide official detour due to the closure of Warren Road um, and MDOT in the process of uh, determining next steps and restoring our roadway. At this point, Warren Road is closed indefinitely. Um, I believe at some point MDOT will make a determination on how to restore this crossing, but at the moment, none of that has been uh, determined or communicated with our agency. I'll stop sharing my screen and take any questions that the board may have. Was anyone injured, Jim? There were no serious injuries. It's my understanding that some of the uh, vehicles that were near to the truck uh, that struck the bridge, that this concrete rained down and um, did damage some of those cars. There, there may have been one motorist that did um, have to go to the hospital for minor injury, but nothing significant. Thank goodness. <sighs> Wow. We got lucky on that one in that instance. We did. Um, I, again, testament to our staff, 
uh, we're fairly practiced with emergent response and working with our area emergency responders and working with MDOT. This isn't the first time that we've been involved in a bridge strike and um, our staff were prompt, they were collaborative, they worked long hours, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And um, uh, that included our night patrol crew overnight. We were a recipient of Homeland Security grant funding a couple years ago that allowed us to purchase uh, mobile towable light plants, light trailers, so we can run up a mast and illuminate an area like this. We were able to deploy those. That was very helpful uh, for the maintenance of traffic. Uh, we brought out a few hundred traffic control devices to close northbound 23 and uh, close Warren Road. Uh, worked very closely with the Brighton TSC MDOT's direct force because uh, we simply didn't have enough devices. And um, the contractor was very prompt and orderly and executed this demolition quickly so that we could get this major highway reopened on Sunday and in advance of uh, the morning commute on Monday. Incredible work. Compliments all around. Thank you. Any other questions for Jim? Concerns? All right. Well, I was in commute. Thank you, Jim. I was in communication with Mark Sweeney yesterday, and as he said, unfortunately, these things come down real easily. They don't go back up quite so easily. <laughs> so, obviously, next steps. We're waiting to hear what the state will be able to do with that bridge. So. All right, last but not least, um, we have Mr. Ackerman with us today to talk about um, both finance and IT. He's had a lot of work going on in both areas of late. Thank you, Cheryl, and good afternoon, board. And my apologies that I'm not sharing my picture right now, but um, I'm kind of go dealing with some eye issues right now and just didn't feel comfortable being on screen. So my apologies, but um, that's why. Um, with regards to finance, we're working on finalizing the 2021 audit. It's going very well. Um, certainly with an audit of that size and scope, there's bound to be follow-up questions. So we're, we're dealing with those right now, um, but we are definitely on track. Um, we, we, as a component unit of Washtenaw County, get a, at least a draft copy to the county by March 1st. And we are definitely on, on schedule for providing that to them. Um, and then after we're done with our audit, we can uh, roll some of our books over to 2022 and start working on that and getting ready for the first quarter budget review, which um, definitely there'll be a lot of moving parts there. Um, and we're also working on uh, various tax forms, uh, trying to finalize those 1095 Affordable Care Act tax forms that go to all of our employees, as well as the IRS. And the uh, W-2 and 1099 forms have to go to the IRS and the state of as far as IT, um, all you have to do is look around you to see all the advancements that are being made with the boardroom, and it, it looks great. Um, and I don't know if Chris is still in the boardroom, but just want to compliment him. He's been doing a phenomenal job working with our vendor, working with internal staff, um, you know, trying to move everything forward as best we can. He's had very quick turnaround when questions were asked. Um, there was some information that was asked kind of last minute and he gathered our team together so we could um, address those and, and as, have a, a quick turnaround as possible. So we're, we're real excited about everything. And, and the goal again is by March 1st to hopefully to be able to utilize the, the new technology for that uh, board meeting. Um, and then also our, our team's phone system, we're on I believe phase six as far as our uh, testers are concerned and that's uh, going well. And, you know, IT has been asking for feedback all along from, you know, the phase one testers. Um, but there's going to be a meeting on March 1st with all the testers. We're going to get them together and, and get some feedback uh, collectively just to see what people like and what uh, changes they'd like to see or what questions they may have. But um, that project's also going uh, very well. And that's all I have unless there's any questions. All right. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Okay. Uh, just the last thing that I have is that, um, as Jim indicated, it's supposed to snow or change to rain snow on Thursday. 
but fingers crossed, I actually will still get on a jet plane and head out of town. So I will be out of town uh, starting Thursday afternoon for the next 10 days. So I'll be back in um, on February 28th. So I am very fortunate to be able to make that statement knowing that I have excellent staff to support me. Um, and so certainly if anything comes up in the meantime, don't hesitate to reach out. And I know that um, between any of them that they will be able to address anything that comes up in my absence and then if it's absolutely necessary, I am still available. So, um, so with that, unless you have any further questions for me, yes ma'am. Commissioner Yas. Yes. Commissioner McCollum. Yes, um, I, I just, it just came to my mind, this question. I was just wondering about the, um, the vehicle that hit the bridge. Are they going to be held accountable for any financial of that. I would assume that they'd be going after the insurance. Jim, has there any been any discussion that you're aware of? There's been no discussion on this particular incident, but it's common for the state to pursue reclamation of costs through the insurance carrier. Correct. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Any other questions? I don't see any. Thank All you, right. Cheryl. Yep, thank you. At this point, we have completed our agenda. I want to note that our next regular meeting is on March 1st. We convene at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Tomorrow is a virtual chat session from noon to 1, and I will be the commissioner on call for that. And then on the 23rd, Commissioner Green is on call for that chat session. There is no further business to come before the board. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Erin, if you would please call the roll. Commissioner Rod Green? Yes. Commissioner Doug Fuller? Aye. Commissioner Gloria Yamas? Yes. Commissioner Joanne McCollum? Yes. Commissioner Bart Fuller? Yes. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone, and may you have productive mediation sessions this afternoon. <laughs>